Hello, people of the internet. My name is Johnny. Welcome back to FNAF News. In today's video, we got updates on a whole bunch of U2's releases, including their map hat and FNAF movie waves. A new game just got added to the Fazbear fanverse, and the FNAF movie is being taken off Peacock, despite being the platform's most watched film ever. So that and so much more we're going to be talking about in today's video. If you're excited for all the FNAF news, scroll down, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any upcoming news. And first up, let's talk about some book news regarding 2021's release of the official FNAF coloring book. You guys remember this book, right? Or at least can recognize the cover. You've got Springtrap, Dead Center, Twisted Foxy, Toy Chica, The Puppet. And like I said, that book released in 2021, but very recently people were able to find this alternate cover, which appears to be a re-release of the book from the next year, 2022. And this version of the coloring book includes stickers and even a pull-out poster that you can color. But the most interesting part about this version of the coloring book is that it appears to have a secret coded message in it. Because on certain pages you can find select numbers like 7, 6, and 3. Resources for this version of the book are extremely limited. Like I said, it apparently released in 2021, but we're only just now talking about it. So all joking aside, it seems like a FNAF coloring book might actually have lore in it. Moving on now to merchandise, we might have just gotten our first look at wave 2 of Fat Mojo's FNAF grab and go bundles. The first wave was themed around security breach and had a whole bunch of the glam rock animatronics, Vanny, burn trap, even the sun and moon. And the other day, it looks like concept art for a second wave got revealed, featuring shattered versions of the Glamrock animatronics, DJ Music Man, a staff bot, Glamrock Mr. Hippo, even an endoskeleton. Like I said, currently this is only concept art, not entirely sure if wave 2 is going to be happening, but from the art alone, these figures look awesome. Sticking with figures, late last year we got the announcement that the Good Smile Company would be turning Freddy Fazbear into one of their iconic Ninderoid figures. And even last week we got the news that the figure was officially in development, but once that report came out, we didn't have to wait long to get our first look at the upcoming Freddy Fazbear Nindroid figure, and this is what he looks like. Personally, I think the Good Smile Company nailed a mix between a chibi style and also a game accurate style for Freddy, and I've seen a lot of FNAF fans on social media echo that same thought. Now, the cool part about Good Smile's figures is that they typically come with alternate faces and poses that you can put the character into, so I'm very curious to see what kind of edit styles they're gonna have for Freddy. I feel like a mask off showing his endoskeleton head is pretty much a given. Moving on now to you YouTube's, they just released a brand new wave of FNAF plushies. Included in the wave are two 9-inch plushies, one of Springtrap, one of Anim Dude from FNAF World, and then we've got a whopping six shoulder riders, all six inches each, two of Toy Freddy, one of Sun, one of Moon, one of the Wet Floor Bot, and also one of Glamrock Freddy. They also released their much-anticipated wave of MatPat figures, and yes, you heard that right, an entire wave of MatPat figures, because not only did we get a figure of Matt himself, solving the timeline of FNAF, which that whiteboard has a whole bunch of easter eggs for FNAF fans to spot, and it's also got adorable psychic friend Fredbear, but there's also a dedicated MatPat pin set, referencing the final FNAF timeline, once again psychic friend Fredbear, MatPat screaming lore, his iconic PNG avatar, and also Matt writing DJ Music Man, but we're still not done because they also released three game theory pins, one of Matt getting squished and twisted into a meat pretzel inside of Glamrock Freddy, with a flap that actually opens and closes, and then two spinning pins. One of the Theorist symbol, and one of DJ Music Man. This entire wave is going to be available until the 9th of March, which, perfect timing, is the exact day that Matt's going to be posting his final Theory video, and retiring as host of Game Theory. And speaking of upcoming U2's merchandise, do you remember those Vanny slippers that they released? Yes, those were the slippers that had that horrendous tagline on Twitter. Well, U2's hosted a poll over on Twitter asking FNAF fans what character do they want to see get slippers made of next. The choices included Classic Freddy Fazbear, Glamrock Freddy, and Roxanne Wolf. And after a week's worth of voting with 41.4% votes, Freddy Fazbear won the poll. So I'd imagine pretty soon down the line expect some Freddy Fazbear themed slippers. And now we can wake up and stick our feet in Freddy. And lastly for you twos, let's talk about their upcoming FNAF movie wave of figures. In the last FNAF news video, we got a whole bunch of updates in regards to that wave. If you recall, we got William Afton slash the Yellow Rabbit figure tease. In that lineup, we've also got Doug and Mike figures, and then we also got a look at the Sparky the Dog plushie. So the wave was shaping up nicely, but a lot of fans were asking, where is Vanessa's figure? She's a main character, 
feel like she should get a figure. And U2's responded in their Discord server that she wouldn't be getting a figure this wave and instead she'd be saved for a second wave of FNAF movie figures if this first wave did well. And if you saw my last video, you know that a lot of FNAF fans were very upset by that rightfully. And it seems like in response to that backlash, U2's ultimately posted this concept art for an upcoming Vanessa figure. Now it's still unclear whether or not the FNAF movie wave will be delayed to include Vanessa in the initial release, or if she's still only going to be made if this first wave does well. But ultimately, I'm just happy that U2's once again listened to the fans' criticism, and hopefully pretty soon we can get this Vanessa figure. Sticking with some merchandise, though also talking about some fanverse news, let's talk about the Joy of Creation Ignited Collection. Because the merch company Franco just released this t jock themed bedsheet, which, yes, you did hear that right, we are getting new fanverse merchandise, though it's a bedsheet for some reason. This art looks fantastic, it's of course done by Turntail, though this is another piece of Turntail merchandise that I wish we just got a poster of instead of on a mug or on a t-shirt, on a blanket, on a bed sheet for Christ's sake. So while I won't complain about getting more Turntail and Fanverse merchandise, Come on, Scott, just give us a poster, man. What is this? But speaking of the fanverse, let's move on now to some Pop Goes news, because we just got a brand new game added to the Fazbear fanverse. In a brand new Game Jolt devlog, Kane Carter revealed that My Pop Goes from last year is officially now part of the Fazbear fanverse, even saying the game will be getting a Steam page quite soon. And once some other things are finalized, development on the premium version of the game will continue until completion. I've been wrong about this kind of thing before, but I'm quite confident that My Pop Goes will release in mid-2024. We did a playthrough video here on the channel going through my pop goes. It was a fantastic experience, one that I'm so happy got added to the fanverse. Like Kane revealed, a premium version is going to be released on Steam pretty soon. Kane says the premium version is the original game, but with new challenges, some collectibles, and customization. There is some hidden lore among all that though, and the game will be cheap on launch and should eventually get ports just like the other fanverse games. And speaking of pop goes ports, we got an update on pop goes arcades mobile port with Kane showing off very early lore looks at the game running on Android, though you can definitely tell there's some funkiness going on here. With Kane saying right now the port is a complete mess visually, and it's also exceptionally slow. And because of these technical issues, the port is probably still a ways off. Though on the brighter side of news, Kane shared a whole bunch of updates in regard to Popco's merchandise, including U2's upcoming third pin set. Looks like this set, the Beach Episode Collection, is going to be the final Popco's pin set, with the designs also set to feature glitter. Kane also saying there's a smaller product in the works that's in the middle of being approved. It'll be smaller, cheaper, easier to ship, and it's also apparently very unique. A special re-release featuring cool gimmicks of the first U2's fanverse wave, which included Pop Goes, Candy, and Ignited Freddy has been pitched. Though Kane says this pitch has not been approved officially just yet, but U2's has shown interest. Lastly, Kane talked about some upcoming Hex merchandise for the fanverse, saying nothing is confirmed yet, but we've talked about maybe making some new plushies, and I've also really wanted to work on some clothing with their team. That's it for for the Game Jolt devlog, though Kane did also show off a whole bunch of brand new teasers. The first teaser being a look at early gameplay of Sarah the Squirrel in Pop Goes Evergreen. Sarah will move through the ventilation system to reach your station, and to stop her from progressing, you must turn on the heating system in the vents, as you can see from the video. Kane also showed off a new look at False Balloon Boy, a very creepy version of Balloon Boy that's set to appear in Pop Goes Evergreen. A 4K wallpaper of Pop Goes in the dining room was also released. And lastly, a brand new look at Stone the Crow in Evergreen. Green was also revealed. With Stone's gameplay mechanic being severely altered for this brand new title, with Kane expressing that Stone's new mechanic should be a lot more fun, scary, and controllable. In the original game, you'd get screamed at for no reason and you had no way to prevent it or avoid it. That is not the case in Evergreen. So that is all the fanverse news, though more specifically Pop Goes news. I'd love to know what are your thoughts on these brand new looks at Pop Goes and Pop Goes Evergreen and My Pop Goes and Pop Goes Arcade. Sticking with games, but going back to merchandise, Help Wanted 2 released in December, and last video we talked about some posters being released from Trends International. Of the key art, the game screenshots, even the Fall Fest poster. Well, I'm curious to know if Trends saw the hype around these upcoming posters because they just revealed a 12 poster book featuring even more in game posters from Help Wanted 2. The Faz Force poster, Mystic Hippo, even the mask poster that we see in the Princess Quest 4 room. There's just a whole bunch of incredible posters in this book that I cannot wait for it to be released. Lastly, for 
FNAF news, let's talk about the FNAF movie, because the other day it officially got released in Japan, and alongside that release, we saw the release of the official FNAF movie pamphlet, with Ishiniki, a Japanese FNAF creator, even making an appearance in the official pamphlet, which was absolutely incredible to see. The country also saw an official pop-up store for FNAF merchandise to go alongside the release of the film, with exclusive stickers and clear cards being available to customers under certain transactional guidelines. So while that's all well and good, we do unfortunately have some bad FNAF movie news that has a lot of fans very confused because it was revealed that on February 25th, just under two weeks from now, the FNAF movie is going to be leaving Peacock, the streaming service that it first released on day and date with theatrical. And like I said, this has left a lot of fans very confused, especially because in only its first few days on release, the FNAF movie became Peacock's most watched film or TV series ever of all freaking time. My best guess for the FNAF movie leaving Peacock is that the rights that Peacock had to host the movie on its platform have simply been expired. This is personally why I'm always such a major fan of physical releases because you actually own the movie, no streaming service can take it away from you. Like I just showed off, the FNAF movie is available on DVD, Blu-ray, 4K Ultra, HD, it's also available to buy or rent on a whole bunch of digital platforms. And I'd also assume by the time the end of the month rolls around, we'll probably get the announcement what new streaming service is going to be getting the FNAF movie. But that is going to do it for all this FNAF news. I'd love to know what are your thoughts in the comment section down below. I was originally going to have a segment where I talked about your guys' thoughts on the previous FNAF news video, but I feel like this video is pretty long already, so we'll save that for next video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.